Okay, I am playing around with videos and coaching technique and providing drills for any bebop paddler that might be interested. The first in the series is the hinge. Uh, I think it's really important for us to unpack the hinge and to understand the importance of the hinge in terms of setting the intent of the blade with the water to create the lever arms that we need to uh, establish the most power as we can and to make sure we're all on the same page, seats one through six. So it's a simple drill. <clears throat> you can use your paddle if you'd like or grab a really cheap dowel at Harbor Sales or Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. I like to use a dowel because it gives me really good feedback on all my connection points on the back side of my body, which I'll refer to as a posterior chain. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to find a seat or a coffee table that you can sit on that's gonna give you kind of the same basic feeling as the OC6. So different than the OC1 where we have our feet out, we're gonna be in a more kind of 90-90, degree, 90 degree, 90 degree position, although our feet might be out a little bit further, but our knees, right, and our hips are creating this L shape. So you take your dowel and you simply put it across your back body, right, that posterior chain. And it's really important in this that your head's touching, that your area between your shoulder blades is touching, down through your thoracic spine and the sacrum. All these parts are touching. That, to begin with, might be really challenging for some, some people. Um, some of us uh, have a little bit of a postural issue, right? Some of us like to lead with our neck. Some of us like to look down. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go on in this particular positioning. So that might be the first drill. It's just every day, take this and just sit with it and figure out where am I having difficulties and is there some chest opening exercises I can do? Is there some neck opening exercises I can do? Do I need to work on my psoas muscles so that my low back has more flexibility? So these are all considerations. Once you get to a place where you can kind of comfortably sit in this position, then you begin the simple hinge. It's, it's not big, it's not dramatic, it's just a simple little hinge. So one of the difficulties I see with the hinge is that people want to hinge too much. See what happens when I hinge too much? I've lost connection with my lower back. So that part of the posterior chain has been thrown out of the stroke. I want my entire posterior chain to be part of the stroke. The other thing I see is that people come way back. Now, when I come way back, and you, this whole area right here, right, that whole thoracic upper lumbar is pulled out of the stroke. Besides the fact that it's really hard on your low back and you can end up injured, again, you're losing power of the stroke. And that's a place where your lats are kind of engaged and connected. So you really want to make sure that you're in this really powerful position. One of the rules of thumb that I think works really well with this is when you're in your forward part of your hinge, take your dowel, stick it on your forehead, and then look down. Your forehead should not be exceeding your knees, right? It should be really subtle. That's where it needs to be because your stroke, right, your plant shouldn't really be past your feet. So that's something to consider. So this is a hard thing to work on if you've had a challenging hinge for a long time. We have muscle memories that can get in the way. And so what I like to do with this exercise, I like to do 50 to 100 of them a day, just to kind of rewrite the script, rewrite my muscle memory. But I need to make sure that when I do these exercises that I'm doing it in a very thoughtful way. So I'm not just like, oh, I'm gonna do 50 of them. Yeah, fine, I'm, I'm done. Check it off the list. No, it should be 50 really, really thoughtful. 
How did one go? How did two go? How am I with 25? Am I losing my focus? Am I losing my posture? Where is that happening? You really need to listen to your body and pay attention to best benefit. If all of us can have the same basic hinge, then we can really start working on the same catch that'll make our canoe go really fast in the right direction. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.